evening and welcome to the Carnegie Town Hall. This meeting of the City Council will begin in a few moments. The City Council meets on the first, second, and third Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. and serves as the City's policymaking and legislative body. Each meeting is governed by Robert's Rule of Order unless those guidelines conflict with City Ordinance or Charter. City Council meetings offer an opportunity for citizens to speak directly to their elected representatives. Those in attendance are invited to address the Council during the public input segment at the beginning of the agenda. At that time, any issue that is not subject to formal action later in the agenda can be addressed. Testimony that concerns a resolution or an ordinance's second reading is only allowed when those specific agenda items are being addressed by the Council. When addressing the Council, citizens should speak directly into the microphones at the podium and state their names for the record after being recognized by the Chair. To accommodate and respect all viewpoints, citizen comments are limited by ordinance to no more than five minutes each. Comments should be respectful and focused on providing new information that will benefit the Council's deliberative process. By City Ordinance, all remarks must be addressed to the City Council as a body and not to any City Council member, including the Mayor. The Chair reserves the right to limit the number of speakers. City Council meetings are broadcast live on CityLink and online at SiouxFalls.org. Information regarding the City Council, its committees, meetings, briefings, and members is available by visiting SiouxFalls.org slash council or by calling the Council office at 605-367-8085. Thank you for your interest in Sioux Falls City Government. Well, good evening. Welcome to the uh, council meeting of Tuesday, May 15, 2018. Uh, as you look across the dais here, you see some new faces, myself included. And uh, so I'm excited to be with you. I'm uh, also asking for a little bit of grace for the first few council meetings as I run these, <laughs> uh, as we get through them together. So uh, thank you for that. Clerk, let's, uh, let's take a roll call of the members. Council members Brecky? Here. Erickson? Here. Kylie? Yes. Neitzer? Here. Selberg? Here. Sale? Here. Starr? Here. Staley? Here. As is tradition here, we open our council meetings with an invocation. And uh, we're fortunate tonight to have Pastor uh, Brian Reynoldson with Celebrate Church with us. And so uh, I'm going to welcome um, Pastor Reynoldson. We're going to rise, say an invocation, and then remain standing for uh, the Pledge of Allegiance once he is completed. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight with new beginnings, Father. It is what you are all about. And I pray tonight for these people, the leaders in this room who sit before those to give aid, to lend an ear, Father. I pray that they will have acute hearing tonight, that they will listen with clarity and I pray for those, Father, who come to share and speak. I pray, Father, that that will be great speech. It will be honorable speech. Father, I ask that you be with each member here tonight. That, Father, as they try to do what is best for this city, that you will help them, Father, with your Holy Spirit to do a work that cares for people. Father, I thank you for the role that Mayor Mike had. And now, Father, as Mayor Paul Tenhagen comes in, Father, I pray that you will help him and help those as well who lead beside him, that they will share information and ideas well. And, Father, that as he hears those and takes all that information in, I pray that wise decisions are made 
Because as you lead, Father, in his life, he knows his responsibility. And we thank you so much for that, Father. Father, thank you for the beautiful day. We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we do have one proclamation, and is anyone here for this proclamation? We had some scheduling conflicts so for Infrastructure Week. If not, uh, I will go ahead and read this proclamation. Whereas the sixth annual National Infrastructure Week is a national week of events, media coverage, and education, and issue advocacy to elevate infrastructure as a critical issue impacting America's economy, society, security, and future. Whereas, each year, Infrastructure Week, citizens and civic leaders highlight the state of our nation's infrastructure. Roads, bridges, rails, ports, airports, water and sewer systems, the nation's energy grid, telecoms, and more, and the projects, technologies, and policies necessary to make America prosperous, competitive, and safe for generations to come. Whereas, updates to our nation's infrastructure is critical to our economic competitiveness, security, and to job creation. Whereas, during this week, contractors, engineers, architects, landscape architects, and trade and professional organizations are asking Congress to support dedicated and reliable funding for our nation's infrastructure needs, including those at America's national parks. Whereas, as an example of our nation's infrastructure needs, our national parks have a deferred maintenance backlog that has ballooned to over $11 billion, including over $40 million right here in South Dakota at places we treasure, like Mount Rushmore and the Badlands. Whereas our city and state's contractors, engineers, architects, and landscape architects stand ready and able to perform the work needed to get our infrastructure projects, including those at our national parks, completed. Now, therefore, I, Paul Tenhaken, mayor of the city of Sioux Falls, do hereby proclaim May 21st, 2018, as National Infrastructure Week, and encourage Congress to find steady and reliable income to fund the infrastructure projects America needs to be safe and economically competitive. Thank you, I'd like to have uh, Councillor Rick Kiley come forward, please. Um, last week, we honored outgoing council members that were in leadership as well as um, leaving the council. And so tonight, we would like to honor Rick Kiley. Thank you for your service being vice chair and chair to the council and for all the extra time and energy that you did put in uh, for your leadership. And so we thank you for that and we have a small gift for you. It's a very heavy gift, but. <laughs> We'd like to thank you for your leadership. Thank you. We will now move on to our uh, consent agenda items and ask if there are any changes to the kiss consent agenda. Move to approve, Erickson. Second. Uh, motion to approve, Councillor Erickson, seconded by Councillor Kiley. Are there any discussion? Mr. Mayor, if I can, I'd like to pull item uh, attorney, professional services agreement, uh, Woods Fuller Schultz for uh, 10,000. Okay. The motion has been made to pull the professional services agreement for Woods, Fuller, Schultz, and Smith from 10, for $10,000 from the consent agenda. Um, I need a vote on that, please. Council members Brecky? 
Uh, to be clear, this is a vote on the consent agenda. The item has been pulled. So yes. It will be on the regular. Erickson? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. That has passed eight to zero. Uh, now on to our regular agenda. Move to approve Erickson. Second, Starr. Motion by Councillor Erickson to approve, seconded by Councillor Starr. Is there any discussion on the regular agenda? Hearing none, we will take a roll call vote. Council members Brecky? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. That has passed eight to zero. Uh, at this time, we'll move to the public input portion of our meeting. Uh, as you know, this is a chance for anyone in the audience to come and address uh, the council and, uh, and the mayor. We ask that you state your name when you address uh, the group. Please limit your comments to five minutes and uh, address the body as a whole. And so anyone who would like to address the council, please come forward at this time. Welcome. Robert Colby. Here. And welcome to all of you new people who've been sworn in and to all of you old people who've been sworn at. <laughs> uh, might make one recommendation when you have a person up there telling us how to behave that they should at least look like they enjoy being a city employee. It, it might make a little more of a, a positive feeling in the whole agenda. Now, the thing that I, always gets me is when we deal with political entities is who do they listen to? Do they listen to the money? If you're gonna to listen to money, you won't listen to me because I don't have any. And when you, if you listen to religious people, um, remember all people are equal, one in another, to whatever your particular persuasion happens to be and that uh, because it doesn't go the way of your religious persuasion doesn't mean you're being picked on. It simply means that the pl playing field is to be leveled. And when it comes to politics, um, I would always admonish people to not do their political thing on that side of the bench once you're elected do what is right and good for the people. Um, I know that <clears throat> old time over the hill politicians like myself sometimes don't get listened to, but then again I see that at least four of the people that are advising our new mayor I have worked with and I'm hoping it doesn't mean it's SSDD because uh, although at least four of them one I held in high esteem, another one I tolerated, and two of them I didn't particularly get along well with, but that was my problem, not the mayor's problem. The <clears throat> I would ask and give you a, a small complaint. When you were talking about you know, uh, broadcasting your, the events here, I complained 20 years ago or more, and that public access television as opposed to putting this on cable because you force the, your constituency to not only buy the television set, which most people have, but they have to subscribe to a cable outlet and not everybody has access to cable and they have to pay on a monthly fee. I mean, I just use an antenna and I have, let's see, Channel two, three versions, channel four, two versions, channel seven, three, 11, four, 14, two, 13, three, uh, channel 20, which is Minnesota Public Television, five, uh, South Dakota Public Television has four versions and the channel 46 has two. Um, you'd think that there'd be some room in there somewhere that not only would the city, but the county and any other political entity would broadcast over a public access channel as opposed to being on cable. I mean, I hate to think I'd have to pay to watch county and city to do my business or our business here. And you've often heard me say that 
I really liked a lot of things Mark Twain said. One of them uh, was, um, diapers and politicians should be changed regular and for the same reason. It's always been my fear that when we change that diaper that's full, we put a new one on that's only half full. Thank you very much. I hope you have a good session here. I may come back. You may regret it, but enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yes, sir. My name is Carlton Retzlaff, and I'd like to say welcome you all, new members and old, and I'd like to say in this year of the Lord, 2018, the fine city of Sioux Falls should probably start thinking about bus service on Sundays. I hear in the paper that they want all the people on welfare to work, yet on Sunday, there's no bus service. And by the time they take a cab to work and a cab home, they didn't make any money on Sunday, unless they worked a lot of hours. I don't propose you have some big study. I just propose you ask the bus company how much more it'd be to have seven day bus service instead of six. Thank you. Thank you, Carlton. Greetings, I'm David Zokaitis, and um, we're changing the guard today, so I figured I'd uh, talk about that for a little while. And I wanted to start off by introducing myself, as you requested, because some of you haven't seen me up here before and wanted to say hi. I try to be hopeful, honest, and realistic. I want to be analytical and compassionate and tactful and respectful. Sometimes it's hard to do all that at the same time, but I do my best. No good in getting people upset when you're trying, just trying to tell the world what's going on. And in a bigger context, I don't like what I see going on in the world. There's a whole lot of nasty stuff, and I would like to change it. Oh, and also by way of introduction, I had a very educational mayoral campaign. Learned a lot. What we have in this country is a democratic republic. And we have a peaceful exchange of power. The people get to vote. We get new leaders. It's great. I mean, really, that, that's just marvelous. And there's, there's some downsides to all of this. And it doesn't work like cookies and cream all the time. But in general, this is a, a really good attribute to have in our country. And I would like to commend the political candidates we had recently. Uh, running for office, oh my gosh, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of time, a lot of dedication. It's really hard. And we salute people who campaign. Now, I, I kind of say we because when I've been around, people have commended me, so I'm kind of passing that on to the greater crowd here. We commend people who campaign for office because it is so much work and so valuable, too. Oh, and I'm commending the successful candidates, the, the new mayor and the new counselors. Jolly good. Now, we've got a, a new government, or a, a little tweak on the old government, and I advocate promoting better government, and maybe changing some focusing along the way. Uh, so I'm going to offer two valuable but difficult opportunities to do just that. I've talked about this parking ramp before, and it's worth addressing at least briefly here tonight. If you're familiar with the Walker report from a few years ago, it said, you know, $10 million buys a really big spiffy parking ramp. Now, for some reason, the city wants to spend $21 million for a small parking ramp. And we want to do that with a disreputable builder. Looks like a scam. I'd recommend that you just cancel it. Say, no. Don't want to do that. That's my recommendation for what it's worth. And that's why. I mean, there's the one-page summary. Three bullet points. Seems pretty obvious. OK, now, during the mayoral campaign, I heard a lot of people talking about drug treatment programs. Just talking about that in such a wide 
concept, it, that's huge. I mean, we hadn't seen that going on in politics before. And hopefully I've had something to do with that because it's big on my flyer and I gave it away and talked to some people, but you know, that's huge. We should try to heal people instead of putting them in jail. But on the downside, you know, promises are easy and our city budget is effectively declining. Well, it's growing if you look at the numbers, but inflation and growing population means that effectively the budget is shrinking. And then there's this perennial argument that we need to get tough on crime, but that just means more prisons, more cops, and more pressure on the budget. It's gonna be hard getting all this to work together. But anyway, I advocate drug treatment programs. It'll keep us all a lot happier. Reduce crime, all that kind of good stuff. Now, I like to close by saying we should enjoy the world and enjoy nature. And usually I have landscape, but I was kind of short on landscape, so I looked up that time, hey, the sky's beautiful. So tonight I'll close with a skyscape, and uh, we should enjoy our world. And with that, I bid everybody a good evening. Thanks, David. Hello, people. Uh, once again, uh, well, some of you uh, may not know me so well, but I am Stephen Siano. I am a uh, blacklisted uh, disabled veteran, disabled with PTSD since 78, a victim of discrimination for my beliefs, which is the reason I became disabled in 78. And uh, it was an attack on me for in the military for my beliefs being different. And uh, that is related somewhat, as I've shared before, to my having a high degree of uh, logical and rule subtype Asperger's. Um, locally, it has manifested with, uh, from what I see, locals taking part in a VA-led assault on me. Um, and I have tried to get locals to, uh, to act positively in defense of me and other um, victims, other veterans, other uh, mentally disabled people. Um, but I have gotten nowhere, even with the Human Relations Department, um, whose attorney is present at the moment, um, certainly. And I have asked, and she certainly is aware, well aware. And uh, I appreciate what the incoming executive has said about accountability. And I have presented to you people uh, as a group that uh, what you do has its consequences. And uh, lawfully, you are culpable in felonies that are being committed against me and others. Um, as can be presented, if I can manage to survive, I have many times come up here and struggled to breathe. It has been clear that I have been struggling to breathe and to stand because I have a couple of spinal injuries as well as uh, breathing difficulties. So uh, my disabilities include physical as well as mental. Uh, with the Asperger's and the uh, PTSD. And I will look forward to getting some kind of uh, assistance. And I do hope that we are sincere in our presentation of, of uh, accountability. Because uh, without that, we have no democracy. We must be accountable, and as I've said before, you can't serve two masters, and uh, consent must be informed. So we must have absolute transparency. We must have, like, I want every letter that I have sent and every letter that everyone else has sent to the city council or mayor to be published publicly so the public has access to it, otherwise, we don't have accountability because we don't have transparency. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is John Almont. I uh, live on the corner of uh, 44th and Glendale. And uh, for quite a few years, we had 
a poor storm drainage system and water would back up in the, on our properties. And uh, it was in early June, we had about a five or six inch rain and the water came up almost to the window well. So I called the city street department and asked if they could deliver sandbags. And they said, yes, they would bring sandbags out. So I went downstairs and got my waders because it was getting pretty deep out there. And the city truck came, loaded, a flatbed city truck loaded with sandbags and backed up on my driveway. And I was in a hurry to get the window wells covered so there wasn't any more damage in the home. And I put out 48 sandbags and uh, waved to the driver and he took off with the truck. Uh, within two days, and prior to that, the driveway had no flaws, no cracks, no problems. The driveway, the, the sidewalk, or the approach. And within about two to three days after that truck had left, the driveway and the approach started cracking and the sidewalk. Uh, within 30 days, it was a complete mess. I have called numerous people at the city asking for, you know, what can be done here. Uh, the street manager didn't want to get involved in it. He wouldn't come off the home and look at it. I had contractors come out and they verified that any type of a heavy weight like that over concrete that's underwater, it's going to crack. So I, I believe that I should be compensated to have the driveway and the approach replaced. If you look at the pictures, the sidewalk part of that looks pretty good right now. And that's because about six years ago, the gas company came in and replaced all the gas lines in our neighborhood. And they took out about six sections of the sidewalk. But the way that is cracked there is the way it's been hmm. within 30 days of the time that their truck backed up on there. And every, from mayors to the street department to commissioners, uh, I, I just can't get a straight answer. What happened, happened. Uh, my wife was a witness to it. She looked out the window and saw the truck in the driveway. So what happened, happened is the truth. Uh, so help me God, that's the way it happened. And uh, I, I think I should be compensated to have the driveway and the approach replaced. That's about what I have to say. Thank you, John. Bruce Danielson. First, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, in inaugural today. And yesterday, I was at a, a Presbyterian Jewish funeral. And it reminded me of something. And I, and I just wanted to talk a, a little bit about Sylvia Hankin. And I know that's not uh, exactly, doesn't look like that should be a part of tonight. But and actually, it was. Uh, because. Many people have forgotten or didn't even know that she had been a commissioner here in Sioux Falls in the late 80s at the death of Kenny Anderson Sr. And she was asked to take over the position for about six months. And I got to know Sylvia back in the late 70s after she had taken the state of South Dakota to the Supreme Court for, the, uh, for aid to help her disabled daughter, Elizabeth. And some of you have met one of my family members that comes here and joins me. And, and in the process of trying to find a way to protect her and help her for the rest of her life, I got to know Sylvia. And this is something that very few people really knew about Sylvia. They knew her, the exuberance, the get involved in everything, do whatever. But when I first met Sylvia and I started telling her what what needed, you know, what we were trying to accomplish and that I had admired what she had done. First thing Sylvia did was she told me, 
you got to do this, then you do this, and then you do this, and she just named off all these things that you had to do. And that was the thing that Sylvia used to do. And she, a lot of you may know her in her later life, but those are things that you got used to being around Sylvia and knowing that she was going to direct traffic, she, whatever was going to be needed, she was going to be in charge of it. And if that meant getting involved in creating a parade for downtown for the Irish because they didn't know how to do it, then she was going to do it. So it reminded me in, in this whole process that several years ago, I asked some council members if they could do something for us citizens. Sy Sylvia was a citizen activist of the first degree, and she just found her voice in different ways. There's a lot of us that come here and we're citizen activists for whatever it is that we happen to see or feel. But the one thing that she did with her humanitarianism is she joined this body to help this body. And I've asked in the past, and I would like this council to pass a resolution to have posted in the outer room a list of everybody who's ever been a commissioner, everybody who's ever been a mayor, and everybody who's ever been a city council member with their terms so that we can never forget any of these people because people forgot about Sylvia. And that's all I have to say. And thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Anyone else? Seeing none, we're going to move to the consent agenda item that we pulled. Um, I ask that the consent agenda item be pulled because I need to recuse myself. And my understanding of recusal is that I need to declare my conflict of interest. I ask that the $10,000 contract with Woods Fuller be pulled because my daughter is an associate at Woods Fuller. So I think it would give, I want to avoid the appearance of impropriety. So I want to let everyone know that I am not going to be voting on that. And the, the um, Woods Fuller does frequently do business with the city of Sioux Falls. And so I would continue to do that as well. When those issues come up, I will simply leave. So thank you for that. Okay, and as a reminder, the item was a professional services agreement, post-action report, Woods, Fuller, Schultz, and Smith for $10,000. Mr. Mayor, uh, that was my intent to pull it um, for um, Councilor Brecky, and so I will move approval. Second, Star. Okay, motion by Councilor Erickson to approve, seconded by Star. Any discussion on that? If not, uh, roll call vote. Council members Erickson? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Star? Yes. Staley? Yes. That passes 7 to 0. Next item. Item 17, new 2018 retail liquor license for Maine and Maine LLC, Courtyard by Marriott, 4300 West Empire Place, cup not required. This is, in a, this is an addition to an existing license. New 2018-19 retail malt beverage license with video lottery terminals for Lita Investment Corps, Easy Doe Casino, 2309 West 12th Street, Cup not required. This is an addition to an existing license. Item 19, new 2018-19 retail malt beverage license for Leslie Reese, Jackie's Burrito Express, 2315 West 12th Street, with conditional use permit 7632-2017, being approved on December 6, 2017. Item 20, new 2017-18 retail malt beverage license for Siwakati Brothers LLC Himalayan Indian Cuisine, 5310 East Arrowhead Parkway, CUP not required, full service restaurant, pending final inspections for fire, health, and building services. New 2018 retail wine license for Sawakati Brothers, LLC, Himalayan Indian Cuisine, 5310 East Arrowhead Parkway, cup not required, full service restaurant, pending final inspections for fire, health, and building services. Special one day malt beverage license for Full Circle Sandwich Kitchen, LLC, Bread and Circus Sandwich Kitchen to be operated at Riverdale Park, 2000 East 24th Street for a beanbag tournament on May 27, 2018. Item 23, special one-day liquor license for TNT Entertainment, Wiley's Tavern, to be operated in the parking lot at 320 North Main Avenue for a bike show concert on June 9, 2018. Item 24, special one-day malt beverage and special one-day wine licenses for Stockyards Ag Experience, Stockyards Ag Experience Barn, 301 East Falls Park Drive for donor reception on June 19th and 26th, 2018. 
Jamie. Good evening, Jamie Palmer with Licensing. I am here to address any questions you have on items 17 through 24. Any questions for Jamie? Yeah, yep. thank you. Star. Um, tell me about Riverdale Park. Do we allow alcoholic beverages in Riverdale Park outside of special permits? Sorry, it's probably more of a parks question. That I apologize, actually, I missed this. I, I don't know if I have. I never remember that list of parks that we allow alcohol and where we don't allow alcohol. I'm, I'm pretty sure we do. I don't have the ordinance with me, but um, even even if we if it isn't on the list um, because they've applied for a special one day, the council is allowed to grant that um, with the. We were of allowed, license. but have we in the past? Do you know kind of a? Off the top of my head, I can't honestly say. Like I said, I apologize for not seeing this um, before tonight. Um, I guess that, that that's what it's kind of doing for me. The other um, is item number 23. I remember approving this last year for a similar type of event and they did everything they said they were going to do, just like they told us, I believe. So I wouldn't mind hearing from the applicant if they're here. They, the applicant for um, item 23 was not able to be here tonight. Um, so he, uh, he did call me and let me know that, so unfortunately. But I did um, warn him that if, if there was a question, the, the council could possibly defer that item and then I would call him and tell him to be here at the next meeting. So there still would be time um, to defer to the next week? To defer to the fifth, if you so choose. Um, and then I would certainly call him and ask him to be here. I didn't hear anything that there were any problems, so that's why I was the only thing that I did. So that's not something that I'm probably interested in at this point. But I, am, I guess I am more interested in the Riverdale Park, and I'm going to see if I can look it up while we discuss the rest. If anybody else has any questions, I'm good. Any other questions for Jamie? I'd move approval. Second. Move to approve, Councillor Erickson, seconded by Councillor Kiley. Uh, any other discussion? That's for all of them, correct? Yes. So 18 through 24? 17 through 24, Councillor. Thank you. Any further discussion on that, Councillor Starr? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Not a roll call vote, please. Council members Brecky? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Star? Yes. Staley? Yes. That passes eight to zero. Next item. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018 at 7 p.m. for item 25. An ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota rezoning property located at 117 <coughs> South Garfield Avenue from the RD2 Townhome Residential Suburban District to the RT1 Single Family Residential Traditional District, petition number 8302-2018 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval six to zero. Uh, good evening, Jason Bieber with Planning and Building Services. Uh, this is an application by Bruce Taggy. Uh, the owner is Carol Anderson. It is located at 117 South Garfield Avenue. Uh, it is roughly 0.13 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this rezoning is the applicant is looking at constructing a new single family house with attached garage on an existing lot that uh, is less than 50 feet wide. Thank you, Jason. Council members, questions for Jason? Seeing none, I have a motion to approve. Move to adopt. Second, Selberg. Motion to approve by Councillor Kiley, seconded by Selberg. Any discussion? All right, roll call vote, please. Okay, just a clarification that we're setting a date. Uh, oh, we're setting June a date, 5th. I'm sorry. Uh, we're setting, a, so the motion is to set a date for a hearing, a second reading for Tuesday, May 5. So just yes. to be clear, that was your motion. June uh, 5. June 5. 5. Councillor Kiley and seconded that by Selberg. Correct. Okay. Uh, so any discussion on that? If not, a roll call vote. Council members Brecky? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. S Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Star? Yes. Staley? Yes. That is passed eight to zero. Item 26. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018 at 7 p.m. for item 26. 
an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property located north of West Benson Road and west of North Westport Avenue from the O Office District to the C4 Commercial Regional I-1 Light Industrial and CN Conservation Districts, petition number 8312-2018 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval six to zero. Uh, the applicant and owner here is Mark Mickelson. Uh, it's located north of West Benson Road, um, east of I-29 and west of North Westport Avenue. It's roughly 12.6 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this rezoning is the applicant is looking at constructing a warehouse building on the portion that's zoned I-1 and then future commercial uh, development on the C-4 portion of the lot. Um, if this warehouse, uh, or the concept plan for the proposed warehouse, um, there they will be required to level D buffer yard along that south property line adjacent to the existing Martindale residential sub, uh, subdivision. Uh, this buffer yard would include a 30 foot setback um, four foot berm or six foot fence and 40 units of landscaping per 100 lineal feet along that south property line. Thank you, Jason. Council members, questions for Jason? Uh, I have a question. Councilor Steele. Did, did the Martindale residents have any concerns about this? Uh, we did get some calls from the Martindale residences and then we communicated those with the applicant. The applicant specifically met with them um, and then those residents did come to the Planning Commission. Um, but none of them spoke in opposition or approval of it, so. Any other questions? If not, I need a motion to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th. So moved, Neitzert. Second, Erickson. Motion by Neitzert, second by Erickson. Any further discussion? If not, a roll call vote, please. Council members Brecky. Yes. Erickson? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Item 27. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018 at 7 p.m. for item 27. <coughs> An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota rezoning property located at 2122 and 2124 South Duluth Avenue from the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban District to the RT1 Single Family Residential Traditional District, petition number 8313-2018, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval six to zero. Uh, the applicant and owner here is Todd Bolches. It's located at 2122 and 2124 South Duluth Avenue. It's roughly 0.26 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this rezoning is the applicant is looking at matching uh, the current single family use on 2122 with the correct zoning of RT1. And then he's looking at constructing a new single family house on 2124 on the vacant lot um, that's less than 50 feet wide, the lot. Thank you, Jason. Council members, questions for Jason? Seeing none, I need a motion to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th. Move so moved. Second. Moved by uh, Councillor Kiley, seconded by Councillor Neitzert. A Ro Selberg, second. You guys duke it out. All right. <laughs> second, <laughs> seconded by Selberg. A roll call vote, please. Council members Brecky? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Star? Yes. Staley? Yes. That item is passed 8 to 0. Move to item 28. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018 at 7 p.m. for item 28. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota rezoning property located west of North Six Mile Road and north of East 10th Street from the RS Single Family Residential Suburban District to the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban District. Petition number 8324-2018 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval six to zero. Uh, the applicant and owner here is Preston Mettler. Uh, it's located north of East Arrowhead Parkway and west of North Six Mile Road. That's uh, roughly 6.38 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this rezoning is the applicant is looking at constructing a twin home uh, residential development with roughly 12 lots. Thank you, Jason. Council members, questions for Jason on this? Move to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Second, Erickson. 
Motion by Councillor Kylie to set a date and hearing a second reading for Tuesday the 5th of June, seconded by Erickson. Any further discussion? If not, roll call vote, please. Council members Brecky? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. That has passed eight to zero. Item 29. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018 at 7 p.m. for item 29. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property located at 6220 and 6224 South Cimarron Place from the RS Single Family Residential Suburban District to the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban District. Petition number 8364-2018 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 6-0 to zero with the following condition. Required front yard of 20 feet. Uh, the applicant and owner is Darren Blair. Uh, it's located south of V 69th Street and east of the Prairie Green Golf Course. It's about 0.3 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this is the applicant is looking at constructing a new twin home, uh, kind of finish out that whole development of twin homes. And he's looking at uh, requesting a 20-foot front yard setback, um, this, which is similar to all the adjacent uh, twin homes in that development. Uh, they were all developed under the old ordinance as part of a planned development district. Uh, so staff is recommending approval of that 20-foot front yard setback. Thank you, Jason. Mr. Mayor. Councilor Erickson. Question for the city attorney. When we make our motion, do we need to make it specific to spell out that condition? I can't remember at this point. I don't know if it's already embedded in there or if we need to accept what the Planning Commission did and, and make the motion a little bit differently. It does not have to be specific. Does not. Thank you. Welcome. I'll move to set the um, hearing for the second reading for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018, 7 p.m. Second. Motion by Councillor Erickson, seconded by Councillor Kiley. Any other discussion? Uh, Councillor Neitzer. So just to be clear, the applicant is asking for, for the condition to self-limit the property so it stays consistent and it never deviates and ends up five feet farther in front of the rest of the properties. This is by their request. The, the applicant is requesting that. Uh, their site plan is showing that 20 foot, um, similar to all the other ones he's developed in that area. He just thought it would look a little odd to push that one back to five feet when everything else is at that 20. So. Absolutely, great, thanks. Okay, any other discussion? <clears throat> if not, a roll call vote, please. Council members Brecky? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Star? Yes. Staley? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Item 30. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018, at 7 p.m. for item 30. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by amending Chapter 160 Zoning, Subchapter PUD Plan Unit Development Regulations. Planning Commission recommends approval 6 to 0. Uh, the applicant is the City of Sioux Falls Planning Department. Uh, we're looking at uh, doing an amendment to the Shape Places Zoning Ordinance. We're looking at adding two forms um, to our existing planned unit development uh, zoning districts. Uh, the first one would be an open one form, which, which is a conservation open space. Some examples of uh, uh, uses that would be an open one form would be drainage facilities, community gardens, nature preserves, among other things. And then we're also looking at adding the recreation open space form, which is the open two form. Um, this would encompass parks, public recreation facilities, golf courses, and cultural facilities. As we go through these uh, planned unit development uh, districts and do initial development plans, we want them to incorporate these types of uses in there. Um, so we'd like to add them so we can get uh, some more parks and different things like that in these planned developments. Thank you, Jason. Questions for Jason, Councilor Neitzer. So right now in the in the PUDs, for for example, for detention, it would just be zoned. What I mean? Yeah, a great example of this one is that I can think of is Lake Lorraine. the the middle The middle lake portion is zoned pedestrian oriented PUD. But the form on it, since it's not allowed an open space form or an open two form, we would have to call it, you know, a commercial form or a yeah, you call a lake a commercial or a form or something, which yeah. isn't what it is. So we're just trying to add those in there to help the applicant. Yeah, stuff, so. Just like we do in traditional zoning, where yeah, you, yeah, okay, exactly. very good. Move to set the second reading for Tuesday, June fifth at seven p.m. Nightsert. Second. Motion by Nightsert, seconded by Councillor Kiley. Uh, any other discussion on that? If 
Without a roll call vote, please. Council members Brecky? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. That item has passed eight to zero. Mr. Mayor, yes. could I request a point of personal privilege if I could for those playing along at home, uh, Riverdale Park does allow alcoholic beverages as part of it. And I wanted to thank the person who sent me the text. I know they wouldn't appreciate me uh, pointing out who they are, but they know they're watching along, so thank you. <laughs> Great, thank you, Councilor Starr. Item 31. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018 at 7 p.m. for item 31. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, providing supplemental appropriations. Good Should evening, you? Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, I think most of you know that SMG manages many of the city's entertainment venues. Uh, SMG's new management contract, which took effect January 1st, required SMG to provide a $500,000 capital contribution to be used for improvements to the venues under SMG management. The city has received this payment and it is currently held in the city's entertainment tax fund. This ordinance would appropriate the $500,000 $500, contributed by SMG so that the intended improvements can proceed later this year. The prior priority use for these funds identified by SMG is to upgrade the audiovisual equipment in the convention center. This is something we've been wanting to do for some time. Uh, much of the existing equipment has become outdated and no longer provides uh, what I would call an optimum experience for clients of the convention center. Uh, upgrading to modern technology will make the convention center uh, more competitive on a regional basis. The new equipment will also be uh, more efficient and less expensive to operate and for SMG to manage. It will also generate additional revenue opportunities for the facility which does benefit the city. Uh, Terry Torkelson, uh, general manager for SMG, is also present tonight. If you do have questions, uh, I, with that, I would uh, ask for your approval to set uh, data hearing and second reading for June 5th. Thank, Thank you, you, Tracy. Councilors, any questions for Tracy on this? Seeing none, can I get a motion to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, June 5th? Move approval. Second, Erickson. Moved by Councillor Selberg, seconded by, oh, excuse me. Good sneeze there. <laughs> seconded by Councillor Erickson. Uh, any further discussion? If not, a roll call vote, please. Council members Brecky? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Sale? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. That has passed eight to zero. Now we will move to new business. Um, and before I turn this portion of the meeting over to Council Chair Kiley, is there any additional new business not listed below? Seeing none, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Council Chair Kiley for the next three items. Okay, before we begin with items 32, 33, and 34, um, we had sent out information previously uh, indicating what the procedure and the process would, would be. First of all, I'll, I'll open it up for nominations. So each if I could, Council Chair, I'll just read item 32 first. That's correct. Go, go right ahead. Election of City Council Chair. Thank you. That was a short one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but anyway, each nomination is going to be made by a motion, and then it must receive a second. And then if there's any more nominations, they will be made in the same process by motion and second. Once there are no more nominations, then uh, whoever was uh, nominated first, uh, well, first of all, we'll have open discussion following that point in time. And then following uh, open discussion, uh, the first nomination will be voted on. And if that nominee fails to get a majority of the vote, then we will move on to the second nomination uh, and so forth. And if, if we end up with, with a tie um, on three consecutive attempts, then a coin will be flipped 
to determine the final outcome of the election. Okay, so we are open now for nominations for City Council, the election of City Council Chair. Council Chair, I would Go make right a ahead. motion to nominate Councillor Erickson for Chair. Second. Okay, we've had a, a motion by Councillor Selberg and seconded by Councillor Neitzer. Any other nominations? Seeing none, we'll have a voice vote. All in favor, say. Are we gonna have some uh, I'm sorry, discussion? yes. Jump in the gun a little bit. <laughs> Councillor State, or Councillor Selberg. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Christina has done an excellent job in her term as vice chair, and I have no doubt that she will continue to do the same as our chair. She, uh, Christine works extremely hard. She does her homework. She's always well versed and prepared and is a staunch advocate for the entire council. She does represent us all well. So I wholeheartedly support her for this position and encourage, and encourage the other members to do the same. Thank you. Any other? Councillor Starr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to uh, echo Councillor Selberg's uh, comments as well that uh, Councillor Erickson has been a mentor to me over the, the last two years. We've had the chance to uh, be on the same side on a majority of issues, and we've had our chance to uh, be on opposite sides as well. Um, and we've always been able to walk away as friends, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate the hard work that she has done as being vice chair um, that has led up to this point, and uh, I'm wholeheartedly as well going to support her nomination and uh, enjoy working with her for the next year in a chair position. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Erickson. I can um, just make a couple of comments. I know I sent an email out to um, all of us, and I just wanted to read um, just a, the first paragraph that I sent, because this is really, really important um, for all of us. And so first of all, thank you for the opportunity uh, to serve as Council Vice Chair. Uh, as I reflect over this past year, I'm reminded of when we were united and stood together to make real change on behalf of our citizens. And those times that the Council disagreed over major policy changes. Even though I've not always agreed with everyone or the administration, I firmly believe that we debate, have discussion, compromise, have disagreement and respect are a major part of this deliberative democratic process. I've also come to appreciate another value, understanding. I may not always have agreed on an issue, but I've always tried to understand and appreciate the other side and that point of view. For me, this is key on how you can respectfully disagree without being disagreeable. And I think this is so important for all of us, and I'm certainly not perfect. I've been here four years, and I'm still learning, I'm still growing, and I still will make mistakes, and I'll still continue to grow, I hope. Um, so I'm um, appreciative for the last year. I would hope that you uh, support me in this endeavor. One of the key things that I think is very important as we've all been talking about this reset time uh, for all of us and uh, a desire for us to all kind of regroup, uh, find out what's important to each of us, and really empower each of us to serve in the cap capability in the areas that really mean something to uh, each of us. There's certainly um, a lot more that goes into this council gig than most of us expected when I first started four years ago. And so being on extra committees and being on extra groups uh, is also, uh, it it's work. But I want you to be able to uh, have that opportunity to serve where you want to. It can't always happen every single time, but that's something that's very important that we sit down and have those conversations. And so um, I would just ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Erickson. Any other comments? Councillor Staley. And uh, if I may say, uh, as we move forward, we've had, uh, I've had the experience of two council chairs now, and, and I, I said earlier at the four o'clock meeting, I commended uh, Councillor Kylie, the way he's run the informational meetings, allowed us to speak, to ask questions. The public needs to realize that I do believe these council positions, these leadership positions, hold a lot of power. And I think, I do believe that this last election we had was all about transparency and breaking out of this culture of secrecy. And I'm so encouraged by our new mayor because he has assured me that we are all going to be getting information in a timely manner because there's nothing more disheartening than to find out that something's been discussed and the rest of us were not informed about that. So I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to have a, a sense of empowerment of all of us so that we can better serve the citizens 
Because in my opinion, at the end of the day, it's about the people. It's about the citizens. They're, they're really the heartbeat of this whole, this whole entity in our city of Sioux Falls. So I will be voting for our Councillor Erickson, but I, I'm hoping that we're going to be moving forward with whoever is the vice chair as well to, to listen to all of us, to treat us all as equals, and uh, to share that information right out of the gate when it happens, and to help us to empower us to join with our citizens. That means engaging the media, that means connecting to them, that they get to hear the information in a timely manner like we do. That, that's what my goal and my desire is. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, since I false started right out of the gate there, using track and field uh, terms, technically <laughs> I would be eliminated from the race at this point, but which is okay because uh, it looks like Councillor Erickson is going to be taking care of us well, but let's have a voice vote. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. That motion carries 8-0. Very good. <laughs> Item number 33. <laughs> Election of City Council Vice Chair. Okay, same holds true. Open for nominations. Councillor Neitzer. I would like to nominate Councillor Marshall Selberg for the position of Vice Chair. Second, Erickson. Okay, thank you. Are there any other nominations? Okay, time for open discussion. Councillor Staley. Well, I, I, again, for the record, I was. Um, in the media last week and, and, and talking about nominating Councillor Starr for this position. As you see, I did not do that. Um, and I will say, I want the public to understand that a few weeks ago, Councillor Starr and I had a discussion about him running for the um, vice chair position. I had, had heard nothing about Councillor Selberg being interested in this. So I, I said, I will reach out and, and advocate for you. And I sent emails to all the council members telling them why I thought Councillor Starr would have been a fabulous choice for this. And, and I just wanted to say, tell people why I supported Pat Starr. Pat Starr has always treated me with respect, um, whether it's behind the scenes in emails or uh, texts or whether it's personally. Pat Starr has been respectful to me. And as I've observed, he's been respectful to the other council members as well. It's, it's not that Starr and I have not disagreed vehemently because we have but he has never, ever said anything disrespectful to me um, in public or behind the scenes. I believe Pat Starr did a fabulous job in bringing us all together in the Glory House. That was right out of the gate when we got elected. He, uh, he brought together the mayor's administration. He handled things with such diplomacy that I, I grew in, to respect this man. And um, so I, I think that's a wonderful skill to have in dealing with, with all of us as a group. Uh, again, I think he has the diplomacy to bring all sides together. And, and I will say that I think there's a fracturedness within this council. And it, it's, been, it's happened in the, over the last two years. I think Pat would have been a calming, healing force within that. And, and Pat Starr has the courage to stand up. He's shown that through the last two years. He stands up for, for our right to speak as council members and also for the citizens' right to speak. I think this is going to be so important moving forward. I've seen that he's not afraid to talk to the media. He's not afraid to inform citizens about what's going on. And I think he has great courage. So you may be saying, well, Councillor Staley, why didn't you nominate old Pat Starr? And I'll tell you why, because today he told me not to. He said, Teresa, I want us to move forward as a group. And so I'm taking my name out of the hat. And for that, I have the greatest respect for this man. So he would have been a fabulous vice chair. Councillor Selberg is going to probably be getting it here. And I'm, I'm, again, as I said before, I'm hoping, and I'm holding you guys to this, that you're going to be open, transparent, giving us information, um, and treating us all as equals as we move forward. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Neitzer. Yeah, I just wanted to say a few words about Councillor Selberg. The, the reason I nominated him, and by the way, we would have been lucky to have anybody. First of all, he carries himself with dignity. He always, always does. He contributes to the respect and the decorum of the institution of city council, which we desperately need right now. He gets the job done quietly and without fanfare. He isn't concerned about getting accolades. He just gets the job done. He has supported me and given me encouragement when I needed it in the last few years, which I greatly appreciate. 
And he interacts with me how I'd want to be treated, always with respect, and he does that with everybody else. And he has, is a good worker, and he will be a wonderful example for the council. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, then we will do a voice vote once again. Councillor Selmer. If I might just comment quickly, um, I want to also compliment um, Councillor Starr. I think we had a bit of a friendly competition on this. We had some conversations and it's been a couple interesting weeks, but he and I walked into it talking to each other about this, what might happen and what could happen, and we both agreed we'd see what happens and be friend. That's, I'd almost echo what you said about Councillor Erickson. I think we've had the same relationship where we have our disagreements and when we're all done, we smile and go, well, we got done duking that one out. Let's see what's next and there we go. So I, I think we handled it that way these two weeks and I appreciate that, so I do appreciate uh, your service and all you do as well. As far as any comments I might make if I were approved, I, I, I really do believe we're all equals. I believe this position is a liaison to kind of steer the ship wherever this group of eight wants it to go. That's the way I've witnessed it for the basically pretty much better half of a year of watching this. Um, we're as powerful and as strong as we are together and that will be my pledge that again respect and working and hearing your views and doing what I can to pass them and be a liaison between whoever that needs to be, I'll do my best. So I appreciate it, thanks for the time. Thank you, Councillor Selberg. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, uh, once again, we will have a voice vote. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries 8-0. Congratulations, <laughs> Councillor Selberg. Thank you. Item number 34. Item 34, election of fourth member to City Council Operations Committee. You had to work a little harder on that one. <laughs> okay, I'll open it up for nominations. Councillor Neitzer. I would like to nominate Councillor Janet Brecky to the Operations Committee. Thank you. A second second. sale. Okay. It's Nomination has been made, it, the motion has been made by Councillor Neitzer and seconded by Councillor Sale. Comments, Councillor Neitzer. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I think it's gonna be important to have someone with a new perspective on the operations committee and, and uh, somebody new. Um, this is obviously one of her passions. She has a lot of great ideas and uh, it just gets somebody, a, another voice in the room to uh, um, get in the mix. So I, I think it will be healthy. Any other comments? Councillor Staley. And uh, now I think the public might not know what the operations committee is about. So it's, it's a group of four people who meet with our, a staff member, I, I believe. But uh, the problem th that I've had with this committee since I learned about it when I got elected is that it's not, we can't all participate. It's, it's just a closed, closed group. Um, nonetheless, it does deal with, with sometimes with personnel issues, which I understand, but I think when it's talking about uh, anything doing with procedures for the council, we should all be involved at the, in the front end of that. However, I will say in knowing Janet Brecky for the last six months, this woman <coughs> is full of integrity, she's full of intelligence, she's going to be a wonderful asset, as is Mr. Sale. Wanted to invite welcome both of you so I with overwhelming enthusiasm that I support her for the operations committee okay. thank you counselor any other comments okay so we've had a, a nomination for counselor Brecky for the operations committee once again a voice vote all in favor say yes yes, yes. oppose no that motion carries eight zero and I'd like to Congratulate Councilor, Council Chair Erickson, Council Vice Chair uh, Selberg, and congratulations Councilor Brecky uh, to the election to operations. And if I may just, count, go ahead Councilor. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I wanted to say something before you left. I kind of wanted to echo what Councilor Staley had said and compliment you on your year as chair. Um, You've done it well, and I have sat through a few meetings with you, not only informational, but it seems like almost as many annexation task force meetings, 
and you said you filled in for the mayor on a few as well and you ran a terrific meeting and I'm all about people that get to the point and get to the end of the meetings and you run a tight ship and did a good job. So nice job this year. Um, terrific job. You're a good man. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. I would just like to say that it has been a pleasure serving my fellow counselors. And I know that, uh, I mean, we've had more good days than bad, certainly many more good, and, and I'm hoping that we're going to have the same under our new leadership. Uh, I, I know that when I ran four years ago that I did this because I wanted to give back to the community that had provided me with so many opportunities through my lifetime of living here in Sioux Falls. And I appreciate that very much, and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor? Well, the only thing I had left to do was adjourn us, and I wanted to be to sure adjourn, I adjourned my first meeting. So I have a, a motion to a move by Councilor Second Starr. Erickson. Second Erickson. All in favor, say yes. 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 All opposed, say no. We are adjourned.